Our next speaker is Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett, who is in her third term in the U.S. House of Representatives. She serves on the committees of Transportation and Infrastructure, of Government Oversight and Reform, and Agriculture. As an attorney, she served as an assistant district attorney in New York and in the Just Department of Justice, U.S. Department of Justice as well. She's a stalwart advocate for political enfranchisement of Americans living in the territories. And last year, Congresswoman Plaskett co, co, Congresswoman Plaskett co hosted a Hill briefing with NHIT and others on improving disaster response through health information technology. So she's a, been a partner for a long time, and we're glad to welcome her to the mic this morning. Please join me in welcoming Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett. Good morning, everyone. First, I'd like to thank the National Health IT Collaborative for inviting me uh, to join you today. I'm grateful for their dedication to the work of strengthening healthcare safety net in the Virgin Islands over the past two years. I see that we have quite a number of partners here that I think speaks to the what I believe will be absolute success of this. Uh, the Lieutenant Governor, Chigenza Roach, thank you for being here and showing the commitment of the Brian Roach administration to this project. A Senate President, Novell Francis, speaking on behalf of himself as well as the other members of the legislature. Commissioners Gomez and Incarnacion, who have, I see you always together, partnering together, which I think is an amazing testament to the work that you're doing collaboratively together. Of course, our own, um, the Honorable Basil Otley, who continues to work in Washington but always puts the Virgin Islands first. I'm always making sure, hey Basil, make sure, make sure we get our piece, you know. <laughs> but he is there at the Department of the Interior and really speaks not only for us as Virgin Islanders, um, but for all of the territories, making sure that we're getting our fair share. And I wanna thank you for that, always being a great partner for us there at the federal level. Um, of course, to our own Donna Christensen, um, the Honorable Dr. Donna Christensen. I want to tell you all, coming to Washington um, as a member of Congress, as a freshman, it was, you know, Donna Christensen is sy synonymous with health care in Congress. And um, as you can see, I avoided any committee which dealt with health because I didn't want to have to live up to uh, the legacy that she left behind in that area. But she has been a phenomenal um, worked, and people don't understand, worked on the Energy and Commerce Committee, um, which is an exclusive committee. It has shows enormous seniority and respect for the members of Congress that they had on her in dealing with health care issues, particularly when they were instrumental in passing the Affordable Health Care Act. So thank you for that legacy you've left behind. Um, the first female physician in the House. So since Hurricanes Irma and Maria, NHIT has been working with my office at the federal level to bring much needed resources to the Virgin Islands to help with our significant healthcare systems challenges. And I have been working in the committees that I have been um, appointed to to support that effort. Um, last week I spoke at the Milken Institute, um, which, which is a foundation that works on just bringing people together from various issue areas. Um, industry as well as government to discuss issues. And there they were talking about elevating food as a policy priority. How might we pursue food policy as a vehicle to change healthcare and climate crisis in our country? Um, and people are wondering, food and its relationship to health, you all that are in the business of course recognize how important food is to people's health. And we heard an example of that this morning from Mr. Otley and his trying to teeth all the time the bad food. Um, but there is an assault on health care going on right now in Washington, and it's very insidious in the way it comes about. For one, the constant assault on food stamps, the assault on school lunch programs. Um, this, the administration this year have been able to put additional criteria on the school lunch program which we believe will mean about two million children throughout the United States unable to access school lunch programs by creating additional paperwork and criteria for the schools and their families um, to have to pursue. That is an assault on healthcare. 
um, because we know many of these children rely solely on those two lunches that they receive in school to meet their health care needs, their nutrition needs. Uh, additionally, I want you all to know that we have been working heavily on Medicaid. Um, the Virgin Islands has faced a crisis in Medicaid where the money that we receive from the Affordable Care Act, as well as the 100% that we had been receiving for the last two years, expired in September. Um, the U.S. House of Representatives, we were able to pass legislation which continues to give Medicaid at 100% to the Virgin Islands and the territories for an additional two years, then 83% for the federal match um, for three years, and for a last year of a five-year period at 75%. We do not have any language on the part of the Senate at this time. And because of that, um, and they haven't worked on any budget um, matters at this point, which is why right now the House is on, the Congress is on a continuing resolution. Don, you know how um, crippling that can be. Places like NIH, others cannot make decisions about projects, about things that they're going to continue working on because the money is only funded until November of this year. Unfortunately, we believe that there will be another continuing resolution that will take us into January. Um, at that time, our money will continue at 100% for Medicaid, um, the match that the federal government will pay. But where it goes beyond that is right now up to the Senate. And so we've been really trying to push the Senate to not only come to a match on these issues, but others as well. Because additionally, um, some of you know the relationship with um, domestic violence and the issues that women have. Um, we have been able to give double the funding for the Violence Against Women Act to support uh, programs that are here in the Virgin Islands. And we're waiting again for the Senate to make a decision on that. Um, we also have language in the education bill that will be coming up, which gives the University of the Virgin Islands a special status and allows for separate funding streams for them for a medical school. Um, and we're waiting for the Senate to come up with their language as well. So there are a lot of issues that may not be directly in the area of health, but affect healthcare systems that we're working on in Washington, and I'd love to have your support on that. Um, in June of 2018, I was joined by NHIT, as you heard, along with my colleague, Congresswoman Jennifer Gonzalez Colon of Puerto Rico, and Doris Matsui of California, along with uh, Congresswoman Christensen, in convening a congressional briefing that focused on preparedness and how we can improve preparedness and our systems to mitigate against future disasters in the healthcare field. Since then, NHIT Collaborative has held webinars, listening sessions on all of our islands. A major takeaway has been the, new, the need for community engagement. The community wants to be involved. There is also a need for one collective voice between the Departments of Human Services and Health, um, clinicians, providers, community organizations to reach out to the community and in a unified manner sees the opportunity we have to improve healthcare innovations in the Virgin Islands. NHIT, as you've, as you've heard today, has been awarded nearly $15 million in federal funds to help the Virgin Islands implement a territory-wide health information exchange structure, a technology to be a tool for that unification. This structure will enable us to do several things with buy-in from the community, all right? That's key, the buy-in of the community update our public health registries and data systems with particular attention paid to the unique challenges of the territory, encourage the adoption and meaningful use of health information exchange technology, which can help to improve healthcare delivery and quality, and allow for the connectivity between the departments of human services, health, the providers, hospitals, clinicians, clinics across our territory. The health information exchange project also involves a strategy for mitigating health risks due to natural hazards. In the aftermath of the hurricanes, our territory suffered a loss of critical health data due to damage sustained by the island's backup systems. The strategy includes digitizing records, epidemi epidemiological <laughs> reporting, and other vital statistics in order to prevent future loss due to natural disasters. 
This is a huge opportunity for us with access to these new resources. It's an opportunity for me as well, having the specific data that's needed to encourage legislation. Um, without that data, we're just speaking anecdotally. Um, without the data, with the data, we're able to make much stronger arguments in Congress as to funding, as to support for our systems. The strat this keeps us, we have to keep this momentum. We've been building for years with the help of the community. I'm so glad to see partners like AARP, our clinics here, individuals who are providers, pharmacies, others, all working together collaboratively to support this endeavor. Um, Louis, you and your staff have done a tremendous job. You have a passion that's unmatched in this area. I'm grateful to have you here working with us. I'm grateful to see an area where the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico are not fighting with each other, but working together to support a common cause. Um, thank you so much, and you have my uh, unending support. Take, uh, thank you, everyone.